When visiting a museum in Europe, it's easy to come across a lot of objects that we might perceive as foreign or exotic. We can see objects that come from distant places and cultures and artworks that have been exchanged and collected over time. These objects are a physical example of contacts between different cultures and people and can tell us much about cultural exchange. When studying the encounters of cultures, it is important to understand the difference between cultural transfer and cultural exchange. Cultural transfer implies the idea of an active, dominant culture that has an influence on a passive one. Cultural exchange expresses a dynamic process based on interaction and mutual connections between two or more cultures. In this perspective, it can be understood as a translation of forms and ideas that expresses interconnected and shared histories. The early modern period was characterized by great movement of people and things. Various cultures came in contact in an interrelated network of commercial, political and cultural exchange, which helped the circulation of ideas and meanings. Objects are a perfect testimony of such connections. Their displacements show the many trajectories they could follow and how they were collected. At the same time, artworks themselves were the product of the integration of elements from different cultural traditions. As stated by the scholar Bernd Rolk, objects and people can be seen as a palimpsest, a collecting tank of cultural influences coming from various areas, and so we can study the microhistory to shed light on the wider cultural connections in which they operated. Giuseppe Castiglione, an Italian Jesuit and core painter in China, is one example to show a possible scenario that how different cultures encountered. He received professional training of art in Italy. He has said that his good skills and experiences of working for various patrons and Portuguese rulers made him be chosen to serve the emperor in China. The Manchu Emperor Kangxi at that time had to be very enthusiastic about Western culture. He even asked a missionary in his court to send a skillful painter to work for him. Under this condition, Castiglione departed from Lisbon and arrived in Macau in 1715 and was sent to the court in Beijing. He was highly appreciated by the emperors as he will reconcile the Western style to the Chinese pictorial tradition. The third thing he created then became one of the typical styles in the Qing court. Instead of calling this process hybrid, translation might be more adequate to refer how Castiglione generated a new pictorial language, which was based on his native skill after he well understood pictorial traditions of Qing China and the tales of Manchu emperors. The word gathering of auspicious signs could be considered as a case of less translation. It was commissioned by Yong Zheng when he just ascended to the throne. In that year, there were harvests in some provinces and dew blossom lotuses in the core garden, which was seen as a good sign that heaven recognized the legitimacy of this emperor. Castiglione applied the chiaroscuro and center perspective as many European still life paintings to depict the auspicious plans. We can see how he created the illusion of volume through light and shadows and portrayed them in a realistic way, similarly to what we see in the Dutch still life paintings. However, he avoided the relatively dark parts of shadows as this expression was now welcomed by audiences in China. He consciously adopted some skills from the Chinese tradition. The Sino-Western style became a new type of artistic language. However, it's worth noting that Castiglione was not the only European painter in the king court. Consequently, we shouldn't generalize this Western style in the Chinese court as the creation of one single artist, but as the result of the interaction of multiple European artists. On the other hand, the Manchu emperors cannot be simply viewed as representing only Chinese culture either. The Manchu emperors considered themselves as universal rulers among various ethnic groups. In other words, the Western was not the only foreign culture in the Manchu empires. Manchu rulers appropriated elements from various cultures like Chinese, Mongolian and Tibetan to shape the representation of their identity as well as to reinforce their legitimacy. 
In conclusion, Castiglione's paintings can be analyzed from a stylistic point of view to illustrate how different styles can interact and create a new artistic expression. At the same time, we can see these artworks as memory boxes as they contain different legacies from the past. They show the artistic traditions of Europe, but not only. In the work Gathering of a Species Science, the Emperor Yongzheng appropriated the tradition of still life from the Chinese literati, whose art was the mainstream in Chinese painting. Moreover, the vases that Castiglione depicted were not inventions, but representations of real objects from the art collection of Emperor Yongzheng. These objects had been made specifically for the Emperor's collection, reinterpreting Chinese antique vases according to his taste.